Hey guys, welcome back to Shredcraft RC. I'm Cam, and today we're back here with the LP86 from d -like. I've had some time to drive it, feel it out a little bit. Let me go ahead and explain what I've done. So I went ahead, and as you saw in the previous video, I made templates of all these flat pieces that I could potentially make alternative parts for. I went ahead and made a few parts to kind of test and see my idea being that the rear end flexed a lot. So what I wanted to do was stiffen up the rear end and kind of leave the front end as wobbly as it was out of the box. If you can see here, we have one of my titanium rear ends that I also integrated a bumper mount to so I could put my handle bumper on just because there was nothing in the back of the car to pick it up off the track. So that was a fun little piece. And since this is titanium, it was very difficult to countersink. I haven't been able to countersink this plate as much as I wanted to. I also made a quick little spur gear holder here just because I took it outside and immediately chunked the spur gear when I went over like a crack in the concrete. So this is just a steel quick piece that I made. I do have this templated on the computer so it'd be cool to make that out of titanium and then if it does bounce off the ground it would throw some sparks stuff like that. And then on the back I have an integrated fan mount here. So this is a piece of titanium and I have some raw examples right here that I'll show you on a different camera angle. This is one of the designs. This will be able to mount your standard 30 mil fan on the back. And then for the top brace I made a, I'm calling it the shred plate, but I hadn't really tried putting my logo into anything that I've sent to Senkuts in. So this was my first test piece and I had to make a few modifications to my file for it to work up to their specifications, but this piece turned out great. I'm really happy with that. I also made the T-bar, which is the rear plate that mounts to the shock in the center of the chassis. This is all 1.6 mil titanium. These are the unfinished parts and then the finished parts I hand burnt to give them the kind of blue titanium look. So the other piece I made that I wanted solid instead of being able to flex with the servo mount because your steering is what controls the whole car. Again, plate titanium. This is a raw piece. The finished piece, I'm not sure if you can tell on camera here, but maybe in some of the beauties, it's a burnt plate of titanium. And then I'm sure obviously you can see the top arm here is just a piece of an aluminum so I could test the design and check the wheel cutouts that I had made for clearance to see if that's going to be beneficial or not. I also made the lower arm, but the problem with this one is my distances between the top two holes were off a little bit. So I'll have to go in, fix this file, and then we'll try it out. The reason being there was not enough offset between the lower arm and the upper arm to give the car enough camber. So one thing that I did was adjust the stack on the lower part of the arm to reduce the caster a little bit since there's not as much camber. My theory here being creating the flattest contact patch at angle while the car is drifting. Just showing you guys that not all the parts always work out and sometimes there's failures and you have to go back to the drawing board and make corrections to some of your files. And then again, this is a raw titanium tail section. So the titanium rear ends being the T-bar and the rear plate offer a lot more rigidity in the rear, maybe reducing the spring effect, but I feel like the front of the chassis still flexes enough to provide the suspension that that rear would need. Along with adding weight over the rear axle, these pieces are heavier than the plastic or the G10 that this chassis is made out of. So giving it a little more weight over the rear axle provides more grip and acceleration. All things that have just gone on because I was excited when the Sen Cut Sen order came in. So got those all bolted up and then I'll get some beauty shots of these things. And I wanted to show you guys kind of how I clean them up and we'll burn a few of these pieces, turn them blue, blue, purple, you know, the titanium rainbow effect. Stay tuned and uh, I'll show you guys what we got going here. So I'm not sure if you guys can tell here on this lens, but when these pieces are raw titanium, they do have a little bit of flash on the sides. And if you can see on here, I got these pretty well cleaned up. I know it's kind of difficult to see in there, but I got those cleaned up and what I'll do is I'll run a file along all the edges, kind of take off the little lip on the edge of these. And now these were laser cut and you can see there's a tiny piece of slag on this piece. So I'll file that off and then I'll go ahead and just rub them down with like an 800 grit sponge pad and then clean them really well with acetone. And then I will show you the steps going from there 
to the blued parts. I've gone ahead and gotten these kind of sanded down and polished up to the sheen I want. And then the next step is you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a pair of gloves, some acetone, and you wanna clean this metal real good. Because of titanium, if you go and you put a fingerprint on it, and then I go burn this, the fingerprint's gonna show right in the burning of the, basically what we're doing is oxidizing the surface of the titanium to get the color that we want. Now for these, I've been going for that gold to blue to purple fade, and it's kind of right when the metal turns orange and the blue color comes in. I'm gonna try to accomplish a nice even fade on all these. So what I do is I use one of the holes and I mount it up to a standoff, and then I toss it in my vise, and then that way I can pick that up, and I'm going to be using some map gas and just torching the surface to oxidize this for some colorization. All right, got my gloves on. I'm gonna clean rag. I'm gonna take these parts and I'm gonna rub them down real good. Basically what I wanna do is just remove any oils or any surface contaminants on there. Same thing with all the rest of these parts. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This will cut, speed up, and then get back when we light the torch. All cleaned up with some acetone. I'm gonna pick a hole here, mount it onto the standoff. This way I can mount two pieces on either side. So that's my little holder. And that way I have something to hold while I work the torch. Pretty freaking cool. I think they got some really nice color to them. Love the way that titanium looks when it's burnt. Looks so cool. And then the raw titanium tailpiece. So these do have some things I need to tune. The servo mount being one of them. The inside cuts a little narrow. So I think I can widen that out a little bit to fit a wider variety of servos kind of had to force this servo in just because of where the wire comes out in the front in order to get that over it was a little snug so I'm going to modify that modify the lower arm in my file fan mount was good t-bar is good other than that I'm really happy with everything else I'm gonna have to drive this thing and then give you guys my feedback on that All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video with the LP86 and making a few new parts for it. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if these are parts that you might be interested in purchasing. I'm working on getting a website set up with all the logistics that goes along with that, so I'm not the best at maintaining inventory and stuff like that, but I'm working on it. So these are some new parts here that I wanna to add to the catalog if you guys are interested. Leave your feedback down below in the comments and Make sure if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, that helps me out a lot. Make sure you stay tuned for more LP86 RC drift videos. 
because I'm definitely gonna have some more shredding content with this thing just because that body looks so cool rolling around on this chassis. Big fan. Let me know if you guys have them, if there's any other mods that you wanna see on this channel. I think fixing that lower arm. So I have a set of titanium arms. This is aluminum right now. Final pieces in titanium maybe. Or should I stick with carbon fiber? Let me know. Pretty happy with it so far and can't wait to explore more with tuning and upgrading the LP86. Thanks again for watching guys. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.